Okay, so here's my VHC amp. It's been modded to some extent. Um, certainly the inputs and stuff, but uh, the preamp circuit uh, basically trying to mimic the um, the AX84 P1 Extreme. But that aside, the idea is to try and put in this reverb module. This is that this is that Belton device. See if you can get that in there. Upside down. Anyhow, um, I wanted to put a reverb in here, like the reverb, and wanted to be able to see if I could get it to um, work well. What I've got is that 5 volt regulator. Apparently the uh, BHT here has um, 6 volt DC heater currents or supply. So what I did is I wired it off that. Basically there was some information on the web on how the um, Epiphone uh, Valve Junior um, used one of these devices. There was a guy that was selling these Bitmo kits. I was looking for that and then uh, they weren't available anymore. I said, okay, well, this device is pretty cheap. This Belton device is pretty cheap. It's like 15 bucks. Um, and along with some of the information that was on there, I said I'd give it a shot. Now, one important thing to note, aside from the ability of using that 7805 regulator, is the input signal has a maximum of 1.5 volts. Wherever you put that in the amp, you need to make sure that it's less than that. The schematic for the VHT kind of indicates that that shouldn't be a problem. Um, it's my marked up schematic, but what you'll see here is the effects loop. And this is where I wanted to put it. I wanted to put it on either side of that uh, R23. That's a 33K, kind of right there in the middle. Um, I wanted to take the input to the reverb from the front end of that, and I wanted to use the output right at pin 7. Reason is that pin 7 actually works like a mixing point, so it shouldn't be loading down the signal at that point. Basically, um, when you're doing this kind of thing, I did this on another amp, an Epiphone Valve Special, I pulled out the reverb and, and rewired it in parallel, and that worked amazingly well. Um, and so I th thought I'd try the same thing here. But if you look at the schematic, it says 300 volts, millivolts, AC, at that point of the input. Um, probably because I rewired a lot of things, increased the gain. Some of my notes here, marked up schematic. That thing uh, went well above 300 millivolts, and at some point when I had the ultra working, um, basically pulls out the tone stack and just removes all that loading on the, the preamp, that signal gets really high, and the voltage there was well over one and one and a half um, volts, which is the maximum input. I may have done some damage to that, um, but it still works. Damage to the belt and input is what I'm concerned about. So what I've got in here is a couple of uh, diodes to bring it down more to uh, like one volt, right? You can't see it here, but I basically got two um, series diodes, and then in parallel with that, two other series diodes, basically clip that signal at the at the very input here um, to one volt. Uh, I got a 10K resistor, there's a 10K input impedance, and then I've got this uh, 0.01 cap. Um, you need to work out the, the, the filter effects of this cap and then the series resistance. Basically, the idea is you want to keep it above 700 um, hertz. Um, below that, you'll get a lot of distortion from this device um, because it's just too much bass coming in. Um, anything below 700 is not really beneficial for the reverb anyway, and if you keep it above that, uh, it'll work really nice. So um, I need to figure out why I'm not powered on here. So I'll power on the device and try and give a little demo of what's happening here on the reverb.
let me give you an example. That's this part of the mod I did. The volume is now a master. Um, and the input is now basically it's a dual input, kind of like uh, on the Belfast, but the, basically the stock. So here you have maximum signal, but clamping it down is, is really important for the reverb. I got the reverb pot way back here. I haven't really wired it in yet. There was no reverb there. Um, now I'll put some reverb in there. You can kind of hear it. But with uh, distortion, not a lot of benefit there. So let's uh, clean it up. Clean it up. And you hear a lot of reverb. If I max it all the way, now I got a 100K pot there, and then a series uh, 33K to the output. So the nice thing is, no noise. Hear that dead quiet right now, and I've got this mess just sitting out here already, but it works pretty well. Um, the idea is to try and put it somewhere in here. I shouldn't put, put my hand in there while this thing is on, but I want to install this brick down um, below in the chassis. I'm going to take out this, this clean input because it's really not necessary once you use the input and you know you've got you know, adjustability for very clean or, you know, uh, very distortion at the very end. So this is kind of like an unused input. I'm going to take that out, just kind of bypass that, have it wired directly in, and then just use this location then for the reverb pot. But like I said... too much reverb for that song but just to give you an idea of what it can do which is actually very nice Let's see if I got some single coil action here kind of manipulate my little noise from the single coils not from the reverb circuit I have to step away here get rid of that Excuse my bad playing. Not always, uh, can't always depend on playing things perfectly when you're trying to test. So that was almost all the way up. Now it's all the way up. What I do notice is that when I have it maxed, um, and you can control this with the circuit by adding another series resistance on the output, but when I, you can kind of hear that. Sounds like a little bit of distortion. Turn it down a little, maybe it's too... I can hear a little bit of what sounds like distortion in the, in the reverb, and I don't know if that's coming from the input. It's certainly not because the input's too high because I have that clamped, um, and that level I know is well below uh, uh, the one volt input, so it's not even, that clamp um, is not even uh, uh, impacting the circuit at the input. So I don't know. Could be the device I had, maybe it was bad. I'm gonna side
max output it's sweet it's and if I turn it all the way down just the reverb and the wires kind of loose hang on then you'll hear what a difference Anyhow, very nice, really pleased with it. I'll have to try and get that into the amp. Um, I think it's well worth it. That device, like I said, $15 for the uh, for the for the brick. That's the old brick, uh, not the new one. There's a newer one that has different pin arrangement. A couple bucks worth of components, um, and then just wiring it in. Right. Again, here's the pot here. You can kind of see this red wire here has a uh, the the 33k um, connected to it. Uh, but that's essentially it, and like I said, I think it works really well, um, just kind of FYI, and thought it'd be worth mentioning. I know there's a lot of people struggling to figure out how to use this. I didn't want to have it at the input, it's just if a lot of people are putting these in amps and just having it um, sitting at the, at the very input of the circuit. I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, it's, it's, it's just like having a pedal. It's like, I got a reverb pedal. Why do I need it in my amp? The idea is... You know, put it in the right location. Um, certainly, the signal is pretty low. And then I see people putting it at the uh, using the input from the plate. And again, that signal is very high usually at that point. Um, I wanted to stay away from that. I looked at the again back to the schematic here. I, I like the idea. You know, the input was uh, a max one and a half volts and a 300 millivolt um, AC in that effects loop look like the perfect location uh, signals much higher in some places but then it gets loaded down by the tone stack and then it's got this cathode follower and I wanted to have it as far um, downstream in the preamp as possible um, but before my new master volume volume location which the master volume feeds directly into the uh, um, the 6v6 tube so the idea there is uh, when you control the uh, the volume of the reverb it's not um, adversely impacted by controlling the master volume um, you want everything being increased at the same rate so you definitely don't want to put a reverb after a master volume from that perspective I guess Blues Juniors did that uh, for a number of years and that was kind of a problem anyhow that's it hope you like it bye